And it is Aaron Davis to get us underway in frame one. As Tony Holgate steps in alongside me. Good evening, sir. How are we? We are very good. We've seen a lot of pool already. We've got three more matches to come. Sledgehammer of a break. Aaron's looked pretty good this weekend. I guess that's stating the obvious, given that he finds himself in the semi-final. Nick Finn's tip, or one of the 84 of them that we've had over the past four days. It's genuinely pretty hard to pick a winner in this field. Craig Wardingham, of course, the winner of the first event of the weekend. Managed to win his first match in the second event, but then fell at the last 32 stage. Well, the prize that awaits the winner of this is a date with Sean Chipperfield after an incredible win he had against Tom Cousins. The last few frames were, I will say, the positional shot to get his last red to win the match was breathtaking. Such a good shot in a very s small space that he could land in. And that got him into the final where he'll play. Obviously, either Sean Story or Aaron Davis. But Aaron looks to be starting things off very well indeed. Seems to be back to the form that he was in a couple of years ago, where it just never looked like he'd ever miss a ball. Played in the Pairs Cup a couple of weeks ago with his brother Ryan. He's very good snooker player and appeared to be a pretty good pool player, judging by that showing as they won their group and have qualified for the last 16. I'd like to come off the, cube, off the rail with the cue ball a bit further than that, but should be fine. That yellow ball over the other side will just hold the cue ball for him. Exactly the start that Aaron was looking for. Sean Story, as we touched on in commentary earlier on, has been doing things the hard way this weekend. Scott Gillespie's been playing well, so that shows the standard that Aaron was turning up with. This match live on Ultimate Pool TV and also on Facebook. Have the whole match live for you on Facebook if you'd like to subscribe to Ultimate Pool TV to see the final and the rest of the coverage from coming events. Use discount code PRO2 to get your first month subscription for 4 99 or discount code PRO10 to get £10 off a year's subscription. Good layout this for Sean Story. Good chance to immediately get back on the board. Yellow balls in the of course, you'll be staying on to do the women's pro final, won't you, after this? That's going to be a mouth-watering tie. Yeah, Marion Jude taking on Harriet Haynes. Also a repeat of a match we've seen once this weekend. On that occasion, it was pretty one-sided in favour of Harriet Haynes, but different match, different day. Marion's played very well to get through to this final. Very high standard on the women's pro series at the moment. A lot of people rooting for Marion to add a second pro series title to the one she's already won this season. Harriet Haynes also in the winner's enclosure already. Not much to choose between two players that are constantly at the business end of tournaments. Well, it was on calls when Sean was playing his quarter final, and it was very noticeable that he was getting very close 
with the with the clock. Yeah, we were commenting on that a lot. Oh, weren't you we? were, they're all morphing into one now. It was it was, it was you and I. Yeah, how many how many times did he play down to one, one second? That yeah, was it was a strange match, wasn't it? Because it felt like it wasn't just at the end when the short shot clock was short, but he was doing it at the beginning when he had the full thirty second. Yeah. I mean, it almost seemed a deliberate thing, but it's not very obvious what tactical advantage you'd gain at the beginning of a match by deliberately using all the time. I think it's more just a case of him settling himself down and feeling yeah, very comfortable playing even when the pips are going behind him. Yeah, I think that would be more the case. He'd like a bit more side on that. Yeah, he's got himself a bit straight there. He's trying to force an angle that wasn't quite there. I think he's almost got to now play this yellow off the red into that corner and, and play it with a bit of pace to get the red out of the way of that bag because I think he's going to need to put the black in there. Yeah, because they've done with him much straighter because then he's going to just drop the yellow past the red and held for the black. Is he going to cross or does he try and... Cue oh, ball. Well. well, he didn't have the cue ball for the first shot because he didn't get anywhere near the amount of side he needed and then that one was completely thrown away there. Yeah, that was a bad misjudgment. He was nowhere near the position he was trying to play for. Very un Sean story like was that. Hard to imagine that Aaron's going to need asking more than once for this clearance. No. I think this is probably the right choice. I mean, either way around would be fine, but the ball he's playing now is probably the hardest one to get on. It's almost too many options at the top of the table. He's just got himself caught between a few. It's hard to imagine too many problems, whichever way you went. He's a great pacer around the table. He likes to look at all the options before committing. Yeah, he's what I call a careful player. Won't do anything rash or... You don't see the old rush of blood to the head sort of shots at all from Aaron, do you? No, I think that's where the cyborg nicknames come from. It's all yeah. very measured. Although don't confuse that with being defensive because he's actually a very attacking player. He just does it in a careful way. Definitely a period a couple of years ago that tipping him to win everything going. wouldn't say he's necessarily even dropped off from that standard. It's just there's been so many good players around. So he's going to take the ball at the bottom of the table next and then leave himself ideally fairly straight on the ball to the top right-hand corner. Quite a lot of space to play with at the top of the table. Even if he wasn't straight, there's still ways of getting position. This is fine. Got a fair bit of angle, but we can just go over to the left hand side of the table. Well, not a chance he'd have been expecting to get, but one he's gonna gratefully accept. The semi-finalist at the very first event of the season. So, what can he do here? 2-0 to the good already. Terrible layout, but those two balls top right finished a bit awkward. Yellows, you would think, would be the, the favourable options. A couple of reds that aren't in great spots below the middle pockets. So, can he fire straight into the cluster here? Well, he was about to, but decided he'd better take his extension and regroup. 
Yeah, I don't know if you can if you can get through to the, the yellow there. You can see in it in shot at the top. Well, you can't play that any better. And the yellows are now. And Aaron Davis is Murphy. Uh, Murphy? Mercy, even. Thinking about when I was on the Irish team there. Always good to get the difficult ball dealt with early on. Yeah, you've got to attack your problems early doors. Can't leave them till the end of the frame. But he's looking very measured and very cool. Two yellows in the middle of the table. Oh, they make a plant to the right centre, which makes life easier. Certainly do, and that's what he's played for. A couple of choices here. He can actually play that plant and pop the cue ball back and play the other what, yellow into the middle straight after it and then down for the other two. Or he can run down now. I'll be tempted to get rid of the one at the top first. Just pop that and just bring the cue ball back a couple of inches and then got the yellow down into the bottom left next. Looking like an unblemished start for Davis. That's very good. Perfect. Just looking now. He wants to be on his last shallow, so just get the cue ball back a little bit here. Can afford to come past a little way, but not miles, but it doesn't want to be short, so that's for, that's for certain. And that's about perfect. Just to roll in. Slightly hampered, but that shouldn't worry Aaron too much. Cue ball's quite a way away from that red. Looking like 3 0 to Aaron Davis. And 3 0 it is. Long old route to this semi final. It's the 48th frame of pool that Aaron Davis has played this weekend. How many frames did um, Sean have well, yellows? Well, I'm not sure it is important <laughs> to keep on top of these details, if I'm honest, but gives us something to talk about when we're in the commentary box. Does like to crunch his numbers. You like your stats, sir. That's why we never question you whenever you, whenever you come out with one of these statements. I'm going to throw in some untrue we'll statements. You, you can decide which ones to call me out on. <laughs> well, the autopilot at the moment is struggling to take off. Yeah, the only stat that matters for the players is whether they win their matches or whether they continue in this tournament. Sean isn't a player that minds particularly when he goes behind. We've talked obviously about those comebacks already in this event, but generally through his career, he's quite tenacious, ahead or behind, battles for every frame. I don't know if he'll necessarily be unhappy at the first semi-final result. He knows both of the players, Sean Chipperfield and Tom Cousins, well. But it was Tom Cousins that beat him the last time he got to a Pro Series final. And I didn't exactly say acrimonious, but it didn't seem quite as harmonious that final as maybe you'd have expected between those guys. Perhaps if he does get through to that final, he'll be happy to have a different opponent for this one. Well, you can cut that into the corner, but I'll tell you what, you've got to be careful with that black ball. It's mm. a bit of a key shot, really, getting things open at the top of the table. Let's go for the yellow at the top. It's a decent shot he played to get up there. Wasn't quite a natural angle, I had to kind of force the cue ball up. 
If you just get a gentle nudge there, yeah, that's nice. Ideally from here, he'd want to be dead straight on the ball top right. I think he may be just a hair off angle, but perhaps can just make it. Can either roll it through and take the ball to the centre or screw back and take the ball that's next to his hand to the top left corner. Yeah, it's probably the correct route now because we'd like to get the cue ball back to where it is now for the black. Yeah, which would have been easier if he wasn't keying over this red. If he had his hand on the table, this would be trivial, but i going to give it a bit more attention now. Not too difficult to shot, at least. The pot itself he's not having to focus too much on, so he can just think about the cue ball. Did that well. So it looks like autopilot is getting his bearings. As always, very meticulous, even with the brake shot. Well, is it that hard enough? But somehow, nothing's gone in. Yep, no friends. It's exactly the kind of dry brake you don't want, though, because you split everything up nicely enough. You know, even the cue ball staying on its own down the bottom there, there is a, a handy yellow near him. Yellows. We could, uh, to be fair, I think you'd go reds. If we can get to the red in the centre, reds of reds are my uh, would be my choice of colour. Well, it was his choice of colour, but it's not going to be the colour he gets because he's missed and left an open table. Yeah, it'll be Aaron that will go for the Reds, Reds next. Bit jabby with that shot for me. Yeah. Never looked quite comfortable as he cued it, did he, Mark? No, he didn't. There's obviously some unwanted side. You could see how much the cue ball was spinning. Maybe thinking more about the position. I mean, there was nothing really to the pot, but just thinking about where he was trying to guide the cue ball to. Never great to miss when it's an open table. <laughs> Turning all the options over. Same analysis though, red's uh, Aaron's colour of choice. Wants to press ahead here, where his opponent's still a bit cold. See, Sean's now got on the scoreboard, but be feeling too confident after the last shot he played. This red bottom right is a little bit isolated from all the others. Balls at the top of the table link up quite well for him. The eight ball goes bottom left, right centre. Good choice, I think, taking this ball off the table. Cause well, so he left himself here. I was about to say, good choice taking it off the table because it didn't link up so well with the other balls, and you can see why he'd want to get that moved, but I thought he'd be inclined to screw back there. Well, wow, how about that for a shot? Great pot there. I'm not sure I've played to leave that at quite the distance that he did, but obviously a very confident potter. Yeah, you can just pop this into the middle now, just drag the keyboard back a couple of inches. Either either or for his next shot of those two reds, because I don't care where he lands, as long as he's you know got a half decent shot at potting he, he can use he can screw back he can use the rail to get on the, on the next red could have done with a bit of firm 
But as I say, if you pull the cube across a little bit, you could just cut that one in. You could, I mean, you can still cut this in and use the rail and come back. But now he's sort of... He can't play the one that's nearest the back, really, because I think he'll be pushing the second red onto the cushion and don't play, try and play the screw, but because you're going to hit it too hard. But he is playing it, so he's trusting the skill of nudging the other ball. Well, he's got that bit okay, but the problem he's got is that because the eight ball doesn't go to the bottom right corner, it's not like he can just drop this in dead weight. Yeah, he's got to come through the gap of the two yellows now. So the yellow above the black and the yellow that's near that middle bag, he needs to drop through that gap. Perfect. Oh, very great good shot. clearance this has been. And it's the man from Manchester. He's going to stick another one on the board. Good stuff this from Aaron Davies. So 4-1 down. Sean Story wants to start getting something going. Oh, well, doesn't want to get the cue ball going. There we go. So, cue ball off table is a different situation from just going in off. This time, cue ball in hand anywhere. Don't care is that. For a while, Sean Story was experimenting with really powerful cut breaks, and he always used to say that when he was practicing, his goal was to figure out how hard he could hit it before it went off the table. The answer seemed to be very hard. For a long time, he was smashing in cut breaks, and we were always surprised that he managed to keep the ball down. It is powerful, though, having key ball in hand anywhere versus just playing from behind the line, which is the normal situation when the player goes in off on the break. This would be a particularly good frame to win because it's on Sean's break. He's already annoyed that he's not the ball off the table. Well, I know Sean has had these comebacks in this tournament from 6 1 downs and all sorts, but you just don't feel he can't keep doing it. This is such a great opportunity for Aaron to get to 5-1. Yeah, 5-1 is just a nice scoreline. You've got a lot of breathing room. Effectively, two F breaks of serve. 5-1 is a great scoreline, first to five. Not as good a scoreline, <laughs> first to seven, but it's a start. No, this has been very... Measured from Aaron Davies, but he would have liked to go a little bit further up. We know the we know the pot's available, and he's now having a little ponder as how to get or we'll keep in good position. Yellow available in both bottom corners, but he doesn't want to leave himself anything too thin, because also that puts all those reds in play where you can drop behind them. Yeah, that's not bad at all. In fact, it's very good. I just thought then with up with the uh the beeps coming in he was looking like it I mean it's probably like one and a half seconds he had left when he hit that. And it did sort of wipe its feet that last ball, but this that's another very good shot. Well, five one it's gonna be. And it's the Mancunian. Aaron Davis, who is just two away from a date with Sean Chipperfield later this evening in the final. If he doesn't find all sinners, he will throw you a lot of chances. So, you know, it's one of them, isn't it? Because he does play very open. Yeah, I mean, oh, it's never going to be an easy match in a final, is it? And Chip is one of the best players in the world. Well, he can absolutely blow you away. Yeah, then that's the downside of that, is that if you don't take any chances, you could be gone in 60 seconds as for want of a better fra phrase. But, yeah, I mean, it is a fair point with most people who play an attacking game to give you a few more chances. Aaron, I mean, actually, Aaron's game is not as dissimilar from Sean Chipfield's as it might seem, but what, what is very different is the style of queuing up and the speed that they go about it. In terms of the raw attacking, actually, Aaron is quite a positive player. Just doesn't look like it because of the, the demeanour around the table. I think... 
if you put a shot on a table it's sort of like a 60 40 and you've got to play with a lot of side and, and, and maybe hit the ball hard i think that aaron would maybe think twice about doing playing such a shot and sean would not even bat an eyelid and go sure. and play it sean would have played it before you'd even finish the conversation and that's the difference i think there yes they're both attacking but i think there's levels of attacking that sean will go to that aaron wouldn't or take the chances let's say He'll have a spin of the, a spin of the old wheel of fortune, <laughs> which is it's good fun to watch. Yeah, I mean that's why people love watching mm. Chippy play. What a shot that is! But I don't think he's come out well. Unless miraculously there's a gap. I don't think there is. I'm going to say there's almost a gap between the yellow and the red for the ball at his nearest, but I don't think it quite goes through. I don't know. Does it creep through? If you can creep through and get on that other one. Yeah, maybe there is. I think you could, I think you can maybe sneak through here. You can. Well, that was a bonus. This shot's hard to play. to play. Just play that bit harder. Just get further up. So if he could, if he could have got himself through straight, so he, whatever happens now, he's he's going to bump into that yellow that's on the top rail. Does he just drop it in and play into the centre? I think because he, he hasn't got to get on the red at the bottom. It's nearly over the bag. Right, it's not complete gimme, but you, you're going to have a shot at it, and that's all that Aaron wants. Oh, he's managed to get through. That's a great shot. How good was that? It's made life much easier for well, him. I thought he was looking at where the cue ball he wanted for the, the shot in the middle. He's actually looking at the line of where he could get out. Yeah, he's taking these really well. As it feels like we've said on... More than one occasion in this match. See him just shaking a tad. There's a lot of adrenaline now going through Aaron's body. Just the camera there just behind him when he's on his cue. You can see his chin just on his cue. Quite quivering a little bit there. And that's pure adrenaline now throwing, flowing through uh, Aaron's body. He knows this is to get himself on the hill. Big shot. In it goes. Black now into the centre. And how well has this man been playing? When Nick Finn tipped Aaron the, for the 87th tip that he made, he knew. <laughs> and down goes the black ball, and this is a fantastic performance now. He's got time for the comeback. Going to have to start here, though. Need something off this break. Where's the cue ball going? This is dry. Cue ball stays up, but so does everything else. Well, the balls are there. There's no question. They're not complete gimmies, but they're all open. They're there. Aaron will come in now. He'll have a look at these. He'll probably use his extension right away as the clock comes down. He wants to make doubly sure because he knows there is the final staring him right in the face here and now. Black goes, is it? If black doesn't go, it might steer him towards wanting to take reds, but then you've got the red at the bottom of the table here on the right. That, it, that might go in the left-hand centre, but if the black doesn't go, it does make it things a little bit more tricky. But I think he, f he fancies it. So he's taking the yellows. So Aaron Davis, seven balls away from a place in the final. Just to correct ourselves, we're being reminded that Sean's only completed one comeback from 6-1 down. In his other match where he got to a decider, is 6-3 down against Josh Kane. And that was our little reporter coming in with false information there, wasn't it? We won't mention his name. Either way, we'll, we'll, agree, he's we'll agree he's made some good comebacks. Yeah. He's going <laughs> to need... And also, if we can agree, he will need to come back from 6-1 down if he's going to win this match. One of the more difficult clearances, but he's made some very decent ones already. Could make quite some highlights real of the clearances Aaron's made in this match.
great shot. So he's very accurate with the cue ball, isn't he? He's making life easy by just not having the white running loose around the table. Just be pondering which ball he's going to use to get up the table for the black. I don't. I won't want to use the one in the centre. I think he might pull back in that. Oh. He's going to use the one. He's going to have to off. now because he can't. From the one in the centre, he couldn't leave the right angle this one, so he's going to have to go bottom right first. You leave the wrong angle here, it's going to be. I mean, he's stretching as well on top. He's going to need, he's going to need some equipment. Well, this is not something you see very often. But no, and the speed he's got to play in as well because he's using his extension and obviously now he's using the rest. <laughs> very good sneaker player, so well used to using a rest. Oh, that's tight. Does he does he bump into the red here? Or can he just squeak past? He's, he's going to have to play this yellow quite deep and far jaw of this middle bag because I think if he hits his full ball, I think... Or in the middle, I think he, I think he sticks behind the reds. Well, look at that! Played that brilliantly. Played it with pace and side. So he's not 100% <laughs> certain if it goes. He's, he's having another look at Sean's story. Can't bear to watch. Oh, hanging on a cliff edge. Well, that's exactly what Sean's tournament life is at the moment. He's got to clear up these balls and then somehow find another five frames. Any mistake here is going to be very costly with the position of that eight ball. Aaron's done 90% of the work in the frame. The question is, does he get the chance to do the last 10%? Not a bad place for a counter clearance, but at some point he's going to have to play short position on the red that's nearest to the eight ball right now right now or pop that red and pump the cue ball around and, and kick it out but obviously it's six one down it's it's a da daunting looking shot i'm just going to save it for later It's all about that last ball. You can't imagine a problem with the three at this end of the table. Always looked like that eight ball was very tight. Aaron didn't really have any route into it until the end. Makes you wrong side than that one. Yeah, and this is tricky because he's not going to get many more chances. No, whatever he wants, he wants to get the angle on this he wants to be able to pot that the, his next red long into the bottom left hand corner and just screw behind so he's now screwing up the table to the side rail he's going to have to really get hold of this the natural angle is going to hit the cushion below the brake line he's going to need to dig down I think he can make the angle to get the right side Yeah, he's played that one very well. And he's just got that. Well, this red to keep the dream alive. What a counter clearance this would be. Not the most difficult position bar this last ball, but under the pressure as he almost jaws the last red. Hastily pots the black, though. And a round of applause, and, and rightly so. That was uh, good stuff there from Sean Story. I'll give this a bit extra, I'm sure. Yeah, he's been hitting the brake quite hard already. Yeah, well, he's definitely. hit them well. Has he got a ball yellow up to the top, is it? Oh, how has it's that hole stayed on the table? Now then. I feel like five minutes ago that would have dropped, but... Suddenly there's a comeback in the air. And these are very open now. It's 
never a nice position to be in when you've got a big lead and people come back at you. He's not remotely in a position he's going to be worried about it yet. He's still got a very comfortable lead. He'd be delighted to be 6-2 up. But nonetheless, you do start wanting to close the match out. You just don't want things to drift on for too long. What a competitor Sean Story can be. Still a strong second favourite for this match, but you feel like you can't quite write him off yet. So I did notice earlier when I when I walked in to the console at the start, Marion Jude was actually sat in the crowd watching this match. And so I know she's in a in a pool gear and I'm thinking, she's gonna watch the entirety of this you know, just before you play your final. I don't know if she's toddled off and just to get away from the table, which I would advise, you know, <laughs> to sit there and watch an entire semi final and then come out and play yours is final for, for her, obviously. Yeah, she's someone that enjoys watching. You do yeah, quite often does. see her in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. A very positive attitude towards the game. Maybe she's one of them, just loves the pool. I know she does love the pool, but, you know, for me, if I've got a big final to play, I'm away to my room and I'll just come down when I know it's just time to be there. But then each their own, I suppose, isn't it? So. Yeah, I mean, it's very individual. People thrive on different things. Meanwhile. I'm sure she'll be knocking about now anyway, knowing that this is near its conclusion. And so will, obviously, Marion's opponent. Anyway. Might be here a while yet, yeah, you don't know. Yeah, there was a moment. Certainly, it certainly like at least a quarter of an it? hour if, if, if Sean Story keeps winning frames. And I think he's going to put this one to bed. This will be 6-3. Starts asking the question if he can get it to that score line, and him himself to break as well next. Another good shot, lovely, perfect. Well, this has been good. This has been good from both players. It wasn't like Aaron's throwing this away. He made a great clearance, got the eight ball as close to the pocket as he could in the previous frame. Well, he's knocked the cue ball on the floor once already tonight. This time he's found the middle pocket. And now a chance for Aaron Davis. It's been frozen away for two frames. What can he make of this opportunity? Well, this is another great one. Probably a better one than the last one because... There's no tight black this time. The problem is the red that he's stuck, well, not stuck, but near the yellow to the right of, say, the black spot. I think I might just pop this into this middle, bring the cue ball just past, let's say, the imaginary blue spot, sort of just underneath the eight. Because if he can get an angle and play that red into the bottom left-hand corner, the one that is actually the closest to the white line in the in the break area, and just rub that yellow out of the way, then it's a real opening then for for Aaron. Well, I think he tried to get on it there into the other corner. This red will go in the middle. Yeah, I think if he takes this red to the middle, this actually suits him fairly well. Big chance now. This measured approach is very good in these high-pressure situations means you just stay with the same routine as usual. He's not getting drawn into the fact that this is the frame to win the match. Now, if he just lands nicely, well, it's OK. Ooh. It's not perfect, but it's he's got a shot. Can he hold at the centre of the table, or is he going to have to play around all the angles? The thing is, he wants an angle on that the red over the middle bag to... He wants to be below it so he can get on the... 
on the black into the other middle or it will probably pass into the top left but which made the red now then does he drop it in and play a long cut into the top left or does he come round the angles he's looking at the angles off that bottom rail he's got to contact the cushion between that yellow on the left hand side and before the middle bag dangerous shot Exactly that's as you called it. That's it why it's dangerous. dangerous. Well, has this comeback got more legs? Sean Story now three frames behind, but ball in hand. All the balls at his mercy to get it to only two behind. I just wondered if he could have just, well, just dropped that red in and played the, the long cut into the top left-hand corner. He would have had a shot at winning the match, but wow, what has Sean Story done? Like that one back again. Well, he's going to go and try and play safe somewhere. This is a tough safety as well. He's got to yeah. be really careful. He could so easily leave the edge of the eight ball out. He's played that well. Yeah, he's played that really well. My word, did he played a very loose shot before it, that's for sure. Well, given he had ball in hand, I mean, to be fair to him, he was, he was playing a plant and a cannon, so it was sort of lost control. I guess he knew that was going to happen a bit, but... About as bad an outcome as it could have been. Aaron could really do with potting this, because if he doesn't, he's leaving all the yellows on. Well, he's done the latter, as you said. He's left all the yellows on. Into the last ten minutes of the match, as if we didn't have enough drama. Now we're going to have to play the frames a bit quicker. Fifteen-second shot clock now in play. Although Sean Story needs to get on with the match anyway because he's got a few more frames to win, so I don't think he'll be hanging around. No, it suits him anyway, so it now forces him to move a bit quicker around there. Like you say, if he's going to make some sort of comeback, he's going to have to do it quickly rather than playing long frames. And I've said it before, when you're down this 15 seconds and you're behind, it's a, if you've had any negative thoughts, you haven't got time for them. Well, the person that's going to be starting to have some negative thoughts is the man sat in his chair. I'll tell you what, he's overscrewed that by a mile. Yeah, I don't want to be anywhere well, near that side of the fair. table. No, just stop it dead, really. You, you play him with the angle, punch it in the corner and cube off the side round and drop that in the middle. But Well, left himself a little tester here. Oh, and he's missed it. What's Where's he left? going to finish? Ooh. Well, he's left a double. Do you play it or do you... There's an easy snooker there. <laughs> and that's probably what's going through Aaron's mind now. Do I just play the snooker? Just because... No, it's going to have a shot at the match. And it's there. Cue ball. And that's there too. Unbelievable. Oh. It looked like he'd won the match and got through to the final. He's going to have to sit down because he's gone off three cushions straight into the middle pocket. There's a man here that can't quite get over the line. How's the break going to be? Well, it's a thumping break. And it's a dry break. My word. Well, we I described Sean as being the comeback king, and <laughs> isn't he proving that to be the case? If that red slides slides past those three yellows at the top, he's got game on. Well, if he somehow find himself out of this position, it's going to feel like this tournament's got his name on it. He's got a problem though with that red at the top of the table. Just desperately hoping there might be a gap behind the yellow, but that looks ambitious. Is the space to just sneak through? Well, not to pot it, but to get close. Do 
Seeing what if Aaron could play the loss of turn shot there and stuff him behind all those yellows, but. Is there any way he could just feather off that yellow? Well, maybe what about hit this yellow and screw the cue ball back into the rail and then off that yellow and, and then try and collide with the red and knock in because it would would be a good shot if he could get it. Has options. One option is maybe if he could pop the yellow into the middle, come back a bit further where the cue ball is now and play this yellow into the corner and cr crash into those ones at the top. Well, he's opted for a bit of safety there, or tactical play, by putting the eight ball in amongst that cluster, and that's got a tap on the table from Sean Story, so he liked it. Well, I don't think he would like it that much, but he, <laughs> no, I don't he, think he liked it. He liked it. He liked it as a clever shot to play, but <laughs> he respected it as a he shot. Wish it, he wishes it wasn't <laughs> against him. Right, well, we're going to see that. Right, red into the <laughs> yeah, the red's going into the bottom rail, I think here, into that yellow, and try and shunt along the the cushion. And this is going at pace. How's that not gone in? <laughs> you heard him say, he said, how's that not gone in? You almost flicked a ball at the bottom of the table as well. I was going to say, your guess is as good as mine, Sean. Well, everything but go again. A couple of runs had a pretty good go. So now, what's Aaron got? He's got to be feeling a bit of pressure now. Well, he almost yeah. looks pretty immune to it, but... I mean, six, one up. This is starting to get Chance a bit nervous. Chance number 48. <laughs> yeah, the first one wasn't really much of a mistake from him at all, but now that last frame was very painful. Well, he's still got work to do. That yellow at the bottom of the table is... Uh, I know he's got the yellow that's near the middle. That's his connecting ball, but he's got to get on it right. Yeah, it's one of those ones, if you get too greedy, you risk snookering yourself, and if not, you risk leaving a difficult shot. Could end up stuck to it or anything. Ideally, you want to be sort of left of blue spot just above it so you can just play a plain ball and roll down. You don't want to be having to play too much side or anything on it. You want it as plain and simple as you possibly can. Mm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the natural. Mm, I'd like it slightly thinner, but it's okay. It's it's gettable. Well, he'll settle for that. He's yeah. not got a lot of choice, but just as long as he doesn't, as he pots this, come half ball into that red that's the top of the two, and then <laughs> end up sticking down there. Like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm seeing him left, right, and centre. This match is crazy. What are we seeing? Can he make this off the right hand side cushion? Well. Again, this this is for a place in the final if he gets it. In the corner. Oh, he, he stuck it in front of the red. <laughs> wow. It'll still go because it uh, there is enough room for it to go off the cushion, off the black ball and in. There you see. And he's playing it now. He's going to play it on one second and it's, it's in. It. He's got it. Oh, where's the black going now? <laughs> oh, no. You heard Sean say, he said, oh, come on. <laughs> oh, this match is crazy. I think he can get it. He can. He can pinch this with a bit of side. Well, he's going to have a chance, you know. It gets these in. There's going to be time. There will be time. We could end up going to six red, you know. This is going to be one of the all-time great comebacks if he makes it. I'll tell you what. Aaron, if, how's, how are you feeling if you're Aaron? Well, it doesn't look any different, but I assume no. inside he's not feeling quite as good as he did a few frames ago. Sean's got a shot to play here. It's not quite perfect. He's played that very well indeed. That's perfect. Incredible piece of queuing under the circumstances. Wow, Sean's story. We said he liked to come back, doesn't he just? This match could have been dead. 15 minutes ago, nearly. But anyway, here we go. Frame 12. Ball. Oh, 
stop the cue ball dead. It's made a ball. Where's that red going? Oh, ho, 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 ho. Aaron will be thankful for that. That's just saved him for the time being anyway. If that red ended up in the middle of the table, this is six all, but this is tricky from where he is. And time has started to become a problem because he's going to have to play a shot. Aaron's then got a chance to get this into a bit of a safety game and then yeah. that clock's going to be running down. Yeah, it's now a factor. We're under two minutes. He's had to go. That has just maybe, just maybe saved Aaron Davis's match. I think he's going to end up in a six red at worst now. He hasn't got time to lose two frames, but if he doesn't win the frame clean here, he's going to leave some time. He's going to need to he's put at least a few balls. Yeah, he he's... Right, so what's loose? One, two, three, four. Six of these are completely loose. You can so if you take, let's say, 13 seconds a shot, that's 78 seconds. Is that a guess? That's right, isn't it? Well, you're the man with all the numbers. I did, you know, it's like sat next to Rachel Riley here. But <laughs> in fact, that red goes up there, so they're all clean. So I think. Oh, he would have liked to go a little bit further. It's okay, but now he's he's pushing into the other red. It should be okay now. But I don't think there's enough time for Sean Story to be able to pot all those yellows and the black anyway. So I think by the skin of his teeth, Aaron Davies is going to sneak into the final. And just look at him now. You can see there's a bit of emotion there now, I'm telling you. He's thinking... Oh, thank God. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yes, the primary emotion is definitely relief. Yeah. And he's done it now. Yeah. He's not going to clear up, but it doesn't matter. There's not enough time for a counter clearance. And it, that's only the position of the ball off that break. If that finishes in a different spot, we could so easily have ended up at six all. Well, it slipped out of position, but goes round to offer his hand. What a crazy, crazy match that was. Aaron Davis had a chance to win 7-1. At the time, it would have been a straightforward and well-deserved victory. He said Sean Story loved to come back. Did he just come back into that? Aaron Davis at one stage potted the winning black, only to see the white going off. Sean Story then hit back with clearance after clearance. In the end, Aaron Davis falls over the line by six frames to five. Books his place in tonight's final.